Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to look at how to find the adjoint of the following linear transformation. Now, this is a little, a little bit different from the last example that we had on this particular um, topic, right? So let's just get started and get right into it. So um, this transformation is from, um, is from a vector space of vectors which are polynomials of at most degree two to the same vector space. So this is basically an endomorphism, as we can see. Right? And um, what we're trying to um, figure out is how to find the adjunct of this transformation. In the previous video, we explained what an adjunct is. And um, basically, what we need to find to find the adjunct of this transformation is, uh, is basically a T star, which is also from the same vector space to the same vector space, right? And it has its own, Tista has its own characterization, right? Uh, so this is what we are looking for basically in this particular problem. Now, first of all, um, before we discuss how to find the, um, our, all the, dif the different steps that we need to take in order to find the adjunct of this transformation, we need to first um, understand what this transformation does in itself. So. What is this? So it's always very useful to see if you have things in its simplest form. So I would um, give you to I'll give an example to show how you can actually express this in two different ways. Okay. So this is a polynomial of at most degree two, which means p of x is of the form a zero plus a one x plus a two x squared, and the basis for this. Uh, the standard basis for this transformation um, for P2R would be 1x x squared. So this will be the standard basis that we'll be using for this problem, right? So this is the standard basis for, for this vector space, okay? Um, space of, um, I mean, space that contains um, polynomials of at most degree two, okay? So let's see. So what this is saying is, um, we could actually expand the transformation itself. So this is just, uh, we could we cannot do anything um, to the first term. So this is just derivative of this, um, of this vector multiplied by x. But the second one, we have multiplication of two functions, x and p of x. So we could actually rewrite that as what? Um, derivative of the, of the product of these two functions will just be, um, as you know, in, cal um, in calculus, you could um, make u as x and v as what, p of x, and then derivative of the product will now be, um, so derivative of the product of say, let's say y is the product of what, of is this product. So derivative of, the, of this product would give us um, u derivative of v plus v derivative of u, All right? So that's basically what you're going to use here. So now when you apply that to this particular problem, you will see that what you will leave the first, um, the first function, which is u, which is x, then derivative of the second function. So you will have this plus you leave the second function and you multiply by the derivative of the first function. So derivative of x is one. So we could simplify this way, and this would give us, remember we could write d dx of p of x as what p prime of x minus, so basically this is what you have when you expand minus p of x. So, so this is what the transformation does, basically. It takes, it takes um, a polynomial and it brings out the minus, of that same polynomial, that's the transformation. So it's just, um, so this is the, um, um, this is what the transformation does. And this is just a fancy way of writing the same thing, basically, okay? So this is the first way you can look at the transformation. You can look at it directly as this, or you can still look at it from the initial starting point. So for example, let's say we have, um, let's say P of X. So for example, we are not yet, um, we can already started solving the main problem. I just want to give you a feel to what this transformation does before we do that. So let's say we have P of X and this is giving us what? Two minus three X plus X squared, 
okay? Now, um, T of P of X would basically be, if I'm using the second, from the second method, it's simply going to be T of two minus three X plus X squared. And this will just give us negative of the same thing. And this gives us minus two plus three X minus X squared. So, uh, so, the, so basically this is, this is the answer to the problem, okay? Now, let's see we to use the first method, um, T of two minus three X plus X squared. So, which is T of P of X. Um, the transformation says we, we have to, okay? So let's take a look at that. The transformation says we have to take X multiplied by the derivative of this function of P of X of this function minus the derivative of the multiplication of X and that function. So this is what the transformation, the initial one that was given, this is what it does. So this is basically X multiplied by the derivative of this. We know the derivative of the constant is zero. So we have minus three plus two X. Oh, I'm sorry, plus two X, there's no X squared. Okay, now the other part is we need to find the derivative. So let's write it one more time of two X minus three X squared plus X cube. And what does this give us? So the first part we have minus three X uh, plus two X. And here we are going to have minus, the derivative of two X is two of minus three X squared is minus six X plus the uh, derivative of X cube is three X squared. Okay. So now when you expand this, or so let's finally expand, this is what it does. Minus three X squared. And then we can quickly see that what this would give us minus three X squared, um, minus three X for the coefficient of X, we have minus three X plus six X, which is, uh, oh, we have minus three X. Um, oh, sorry, this is plus two X squared. Okay. Um, so we, uh, there's a slight mistake here. So let's recalculate this. So this term, when you expand, you have minus three X plus two X squared. So let's see. So two X squared minus three X squared is just minus X squared, okay? Then minus three X plus six X is just plus three X. Then we have minus two, okay? Um, so that's basically the same thing we got in the first instance. So do you see they are the same, the transformation works the same way. So we are, for the sake of this particular problem, we're going to work with this second one, right? Because we've already simplified it. So let's now go into how to find the adjoint of this transformation. Now, in order to find adjoint, um, the first step that you have to do is to find the matrix of transformation Um, so, so, so we are going to look at matrix of transformation relative to standard basis for P to R. Okay. So this is what we start with. And how do we do that? We know that the ba standard basis for P to R is just one X X square. So we need to find T of one T of X and T of what X square. Now, what is T of one is just minus that particular, um, minus that particular um, polynomial, which is just minus one. The same thing, T of X is gonna be minus X. Just watch out for this, right? Remember we got this, okay? Which is T P of X is equal to minus P of X. And the third one is just gonna be minus X squared. Now we need to now write this as a linear combination of this, um, vectors in the standard basis, which is A11 times one plus A21 times X plus A31 times what X square. I'll do the same thing here. A12 times one plus A22 times X plus A32 times X square. And finally we have A13 times one plus A23 times X plus A33 times X square. Now, um, in, in a normal circumstance, you don't actually need to write all of this in order to answer, in order to quickly find the matrix of transformation. So what do we what do we watch out for? So one thing that we can watch out for is this, this numbers, right? We have minus one here. The only way you can get minus one is through the first vector one. If I had um if I had an, if I had another term that has 
um, x on it, let's say plus two x, I would know that what that, um, that um, coefficient plus two would come from this um, second term, right? But in this case, we only have um, minus one, which is which can be gotten from the first um, vector for the standard base, which is one. So from there, we just quickly know that what um, a one one is going to be one, and the rest of the coefficients will be zero because we don't have anything pertaining to x or pertaining to what x square here, right? So this is how we know that what this a11 is going to be minus one and the rest will be zero. And remember, we're going to write them in a column of the matrix. The same thing here, the first, um, we have minus X here. We know that what the only way we can get minus X is through the second um, term. So the rest of the terms would be zero, okay? Which tells us that what A22 is minus one and then A12 and A32 are all zero. So we write them, remember, in what? column matrix. And finally, the last one, the same way, okay? Now we have the matrix of transformation. The rest is to find the, um, um, the met so the next step is to find the matrix of transformation for T star relative to standard basis, the same standard basis. Now this happens to be just the, this matrix happens to be just a transpose. And if you observe, it's just a transpose is when we write the columns of this um, transform um, of this matrix as a row vector. So minus one, so the first column is minus one, zero, zero. We cannot, we cannot write as the first row, which is minus one, zero, zero. The same thing, the second column becomes the second row and the third column becomes the third row. And as you see, they are the same thing. A and A transpose are the same, that's because a is symmetric. Now, when this happens, we basically say that what well, this transformation is self-adjoint, right? When we observe that what well, the matrix of transformation relative to standard basis for T is symmetric, then we say that what well, T is self-adjoint. So basically what it means is that T, T must be equal to T star. So the transformation, the matrix of transformation for T star is just the same thing as the matrix of transformation for T, that's what it means. So finally, just to finish the problem, we can then um, write out um, what, the, um, what the transformation of T star is. So basically T star, so when we apply it to any PX, um, don't forget that your PX is of the form A to X squared. Don't forget this is the form of your matrix um, of your polynomial re, um, relative to um, you know the standard basis one X and X squared. So this is how we write. Remember P of X is a polynomial in what P to R, right? So it has to be of this form. Now this is basically when we multiply this matrix by so in case of other problems, so that's why I'm doing this. Naturally, once you know that what this is symmetric, we can just conclude that we can just conclude that um, that you know t. Um, so we can just conclude here that what t star of p of x must be equal to minus p of x. Basically, this is the answer to the problem, right? But in case it's not self-adjoint. How can you still solve the problem? This is how you do it. So you, you multiply the matrix by the coefficient of this particular um, vector. So when you do this, um, you end up having minus one times A0 plus zero times A1 plus zero times A2, you have minus A0 here. And the second one, you have minus A1, third one, you have minus A2. Now, relative to, so relative to standard basis, this is going to be A0 times one. Um, this is, sorry, this is minus A0 times one. Then we have minus A2 times X. We have minus A, I mean, minus A1 times X and we have minus A2 times X squared, right? So basically it's going to give you this and which is minus P of X, okay? So therefore, T star, we can just conclude here, T star is a transformation from P to R 
to P2R such that such that T star of P of X is just the same thing as minus P of X. So if you, if you like, you can go back and write it in terms of the original way this was written, which is this. If you like, you can go back and write it this way, but that is not necessary, right? So I'm just showing all forms of writing this T star. So this is the, this comes, um, we, we are at the end of the video. So um, you, you're free to rewind and go back to any part of this video that, um, that seems difficult to understand. And then make sure you do comment um, in this, uh, you, do, you, do, you do leave me a comment in the section, in the comment section to, the um, to, talk, to let me know what type of problems you are looking to see in this channel. And um, I'll be more than happy to address those problems, right? So see you in the next video.